Joining me now to talk about his and the other Premier's conference call last night with the Prime Minister about vaccines is New Brunswick Premier Blaine Higgs. Premier Higgs, thank you very much for taking the time. You're welcome. Uh, okay, let's start with the conversation about vaccines because several of your colleagues went into this. Uh, several other premiers went in saying, we want to know. We want to know how many doses, when are we getting them? Did you get all the answers that you wanted and that you needed on vaccines from the Prime Minister? Well, I, I don't think we got all the answers, but I think we got enough to, to make us feel pretty uh, confident about um, the path forward and, and uh, what's going to happen commencing, uh, you know, early in the new year in the first quarter. Um, I think we learned, you know, that, that there's roughly 10% um, of the population that there will be vaccines available in the first quarter. Uh, the rollout and, and the, the timing, I guess, of that rollout is, is still um, um, not, not completely confirmed at this point. But we do know that uh, activity is going to happen and we're going to plan for it in December. And we're going to be ready to hit the ground running and certainly provide vaccines to the most vulnerable population starting in January okay. of 2021. What outstanding questions do you have? What questions are there that you still need to have answered for you to be able to prepare as a province? Well, I think the, the exact supply that we're getting, and we talked a lot about a per capita, and, and, I, and I think that's where it'll end up. So, so that, that's fine. Um, but knowing exactly when it's coming and the timing so we could plan the distribution. Uh, we also discussed, uh, because the military are being made available to help us with distribution throughout our respective provinces, uh, whether that will be needed or not, it's great to, to be able to have that certainly uh, backup available. And then, but once we know the precise supplies that are coming, we can look at our system that already exists and how we can manage it. I, I don't think there's going to be a huge, great lineup for vaccines, um, you know, uh, right off the bat. I think that we will have time to ramp up and people will be, uh, will be able to serve the most vulnerable population as needed uh, when needed. Okay, well, let's explore that. You said a lot of interesting things there. First of all, you're saying per capita? That's the basis on which you, you're understanding? On well, that was certainly the discussion across the country, and we were suggesting that was the best fit. And, and the PM did not say that isn't the way he's, he's focused. He, he was talking about different segments of the population. Um, so there may be some nuances there, but, but I think that generally per capita was an accepted formula um, across the country. Uh, but but it's yet to be defined what nuances there might be to that. It's still still a bit open in that regard. And you're saying you just said that you don't know or you don't think there there will be a mad rush for vaccines in your province in the first few weeks or months. Uh, is that because of the low infection rate and the relative success? I mean, although you are having now the second wave and a flare up, but is that because of yeah. the low, low rate in New Brunswick? Well, no, not necessarily. I mean, I, I think that, uh, yeah, we're having our own opportunities here right now, for sure. Um, I, I think it's probably the reservations that some feel. So I, I think that certainly as you prioritize vulnerable populations and, and healthcare workers, and, and then you get to, to those that are less susceptible. Um, I, I just think that it, it seems that we're hearing that, you know, people are indifferent about how soon they take a vaccine and, and do they want to be the first one. And you're hearing a lot of that. So I think that means that they're likely the demand won't be 100 uh, percent on the first day of, of uh, vaccinations. Um, so, so we can ramp up. Is it, a, is it a difficult situation? Because you mentioned prioritized groups. So you have everyone is referring to uh, frontline health workers, indigenous communities, uh, people living in community settings like long term care homes and other communal living uh, settings. Uh, is it a problem for your health authorities uh, and across the country? if a proportion of those people don't want to take the vaccine? Well, certainly, as with any vaccine, you want to have a certain percentage so that you feel a, a safety. And I think the numbers is up in the 80 percent range somewhere that in order to have that uh, herd immunity, as it is as called. So, yeah, it would be a concern if, if we don't receive a, a level. But I think we, we are managing in the pandemic within our health system today. And, and so there's no reason that we don't continue to do this in the same way forward. And we're able to relax those standards uh, in, in, the, in the way that our vaccinations roll out. So I think we can, we can manage this. And, and for those facilities that are less vaccinated, we stick to the protocol we have right now. But ultimately, of course, we want to we wanna have the full vaccinations roll out to meet, to meet uh, the health standards that will be required. 
Your province, New Brunswick, was, is, has been held up as, as the example for much of Canada in that you were one of the first to close off, you know, to really isolate the province, to close off interprovincial trans uh, transport and, and travel. Uh, you took this very seriously, <laughs> largely uh, under the influence of uh, your minister, Dominique Carty, who was sort of an inspiration for your government. Um, so you, you went, you were a success story. What do you make of accusations about the prime minister? People are suggesting that Canada, the federal government, has not done all that it could have and has been asleep at the switch or bungled it, whatever expression you want to use, uh, in procuring guaranteed access to enough vaccines. Uh, that the suggestion is we may be behind a lot of other countries in receiving the vaccines. What do you make of that? Well, certainly the indication that we got last night is that there have been ample supplies uh, that have been already, um, um, you know, contract signed that, that it's going to be available for, for us here. Um, I, I think I was encouraged by the number of different suppliers. I mean, I think there was they referenced it, as many as seven that that actually are, are potential vaccines and maybe four or five that are are ready and available, you know, almost immediately. So. So it, it's like there. I think we're going to have ample supply. Uh, we got every indication contracts have been signed, and uh, so supply has been committed. And that's why it was clear that we were going to have um, an available supply. I think it was three million doses, um, or three. We could handle three million uh, citizens in the first quarter. So I think there is confirmation of supply, and I think that's only going to ramp up because you can see manufacturers really wanting to be. Uh, first in line for supply because there's going to be such a demand overall over the coming uh, year or so. So I, I, I actually don't think supply is going to be a problem in 2021. I, I think we will see a number of companies uh, really ramp up their production to, to meet demand. Okay, I'll, I'll ask the, um, the worst case scenario though. Uh, certainly it's occurred to many people though that if those companies are ramping up production across the world and you have nations that allegedly are going to have first dibs like the United States and the United Kingdom and Germany, uh, if they ramp up production, what do you do if there is a delay and if we don't see the numbers that you, your premiers and your provinces have been and Canadians have been let, left to believe would be delivered by in between January and March, what do you do then? Well, I guess we worry about that when the time comes. But I, I'm right now. I have I have every reason to believe that the the government will follow through with with, with what we've been told. Um, um, we are working to get our numbers back under control here. Our, our our cases thus far have all been traced and contacted, and and we will continue to manage our our health requirements here in our province and the in the hospital uh, certainly uh, concerns as we have been, and and so. Uh, we'll continue to manage that, and, and we'll do so uh, as effectively as we can, right until we have full vaccination. So I, I, I think that we shouldn't over, over, um, I guess, get concerned with that, that there's going to be a panic January 1st, or if it doesn't show up till January 15th, or or uh, later in the month. We just need a plan, and we just need to have access that we can count on, and that's the information that I encourage the federal government will be able to give us details, and then we will manage through that. And we will prioritize our population as as would be the appropriate thing to do. So I, I right now uh, was comforted by last night's call, and I, I think that um, I'd like to think that was something shared by my colleagues as well. More details will follow, but we're certainly ramping up in December to be ready for implementation in January. Okay, Premier Higgs, I want to thank you very much, and I want to wish you good luck with uh, with coping with the the second wave of the of the pandemic. Thanks for speaking with us. You're very welcome. Have a good day.